Hey, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Jeremy Fine. I'm the pastor here at Accelerate Church, and this is my wife. Hi, I'm Erin, and we are so excited here at Accelerate Church that you have joined and tuned in today. And we invite you to come sometime. Just come visit us. We'd love to have you and see you. And I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit has a word just for you today. You may be going through all kinds of things in life, but if you will tune in to His voice and His word, He has your answer. That's right. If you can't join us in person at 10 a.m. on Sundays at 4400 South Crockett, then you ought to go to our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. We have all our sermons there, and you can watch our services live and be a part of what God is doing here at Accelerate Church. But right now, we're going to get into the word today. There is no other way to achieve peace other than to be in Christ. This whole world has gone mad. I don't know if you're paying attention to headlines. But night after night, even locally, there's all kinds of stuff that happens right here in this city that makes the headlines. A lot of stuff that doesn't make the headlines. And it is sheer madness. And if you stop and dwell on that, it will erode your peace. But the peace of God is reserved for those that are following the Prince of Peace, Jesus. And he's the one that said it in me. You have peace. He said in this world... You will have tribulation. I'm in John 16, verse 33. But even though there's tribulation, even though there's pressure and all kinds of things that we face in this world, he said, be of good cheer. You know, I know this. A lot of God's children don't believe this verse because when I see them, they don't have cheer about them. They're down and out. Now, I'm not mad at you if you've ever called me and been down and out. That's one reason I exist as your pastor, to help grab you by the arm and say, come on, praise God. Let's get your joy, because it's with joy we dip down in the well of salvation. Yeah, this is why we have to have good cheer, whether we're under pressure or not. In this world, you're going to have pressure. You might as well just settle it, and if you're taking notes, just write that down. In this world, I will face pressure. Okay, just just kind of swallow that. It doesn't feel good going down. But that's no reason to be down and out. He said, be of good cheer. Can you tell when someone is of good cheer? How can you tell? They're joyful. I saw, uh, I just flipped on for a minute, uh, a game yesterday. I just saw this. A guy broke his ankle in a real nasty way. And I mean, it, there was no joy in the whole stadium. The whole air just sucked out because they had to bring out the car. They had to put in an air cast. All the guys gathered around, you know. And I thought, you know, that's, that's not the time you see cheer. But then later on, that team, his team won. And all those guys that were so serious, they had smiles on their face. They had the camera come up to him. The lady's like, what do you have to say? Man, I love being on this team. We got the victory tonight. Woo! They're shouting, they're hooping, they're hollering. Why? Because those that know they got the victory, though you may go through some things you don't like, you know that you got to get joyful if you're going to walk in the victory. And if you believe the word, you know you've already got the victory. It's already been paid for. And Jesus is telling you right here, Before you face more pressure, understand there is pressure in this world, but that's no reason to be down. Be of good cheer. Why don't everybody in this room just look at your neighbor and smile? Can you do that? Oh, there's bound to be somebody that didn't do it. Maybe you don't have a neighbor sitting there. Well, look at me and smile and praise God. At least I'll think you're receiving this this morning. (laughs) Be of good cheer. Why would we be of good cheer? Here's why. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. (laughs) <laughs> Praise God. Do you believe that? Yes. Well, if he overcame it and he lives inside of you, then you've overcome it. The greater one lives inside of you. Yeah. You better get this type of truth down on the inside of you and make it a part of your life. <coughs> if you were to meet someone, I got excited, got choked up on my own saliva there. If you were to meet somebody that you never met before. Let's say I didn't know Brother Fowler over here, and I said, hi, what's your name? Jeff Fowler. Not a trick question. I'm Jeremy Fowler. Good to meet you. See, I know that. Did you know I would be confident anywhere I went, even if I crossed the state line, even if I flew to another country? I'd be very confident when someone asked me, what is your name? To tell them my name. Why? It's me. It's Jeremy. Hello. Hello. I know my name. Aren't you proud of me? But just like that, I should know this. I've overcome the world. Just like that. 
What's going on with you? Well, I'm an overcomer. Well, it don't look like it. You've been going through. So I'm an overcomer, praise God. Why? I've got Bible on it. Jesus said, I've overcome. He lives in me, so I overcome. <laughs> Make it a part of you. Just like 1 John that I'm already quoting, 4-4. Four, four. Get this one down in you. Of course, I've referenced this one all the time. Now, every time I go to a scripture, I think to myself, before I send it to the team to put in, I think, I'm always preaching this scripture, but I'm always preaching all these scriptures. Here's what it says. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Now, them are antichrist spirits that are on this planet. An antichrist spirit is a spirit whose purpose is to get you to unplug from the anointed one and his anointing. See, Jesus Christ, his last name isn't Christ. That describes him. He's the anointed one, and he has an anointing for your life. And when you're in him, you're flowing in that anointing. And the Antichrist spirit is designed and purposed from hell to get you unplugged from your anointing. And one way you know that he's at work and an Antichrist spirit is working, you can't make it to church very often. See, people don't like that. They say, well, now, easy, Pastor. I'm the exception to the rule. Well, it's this way for all of us. I liked it. One of the best gifts I got for my birthday was a T-shirt with the church on it. It says, I'll be there. Because as I've told you several times, everywhere I go, if I see one of you find people out and about, and you say, well, I'll see you Sunday, my reply is always, I'll be there. And it never shocks anybody. But did you know pastor doesn't always feel like being here? You might not believe this, but pastor has a lot going on with seven children at the house and all of you to take care of. In a Christian school and radio broadcast. Anyway, I, I won't go into all it. It doesn't matter because God's got me a team and praise God and we're doing it. Amen. We're doing it well. Praise the Lord. But I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm po trying to point something out. Listen to me. I want to be here. I wore that shirt when I was out and about running some errands yesterday and a guy at a store I do not know, he said, man, I like that shirt. I said, do you? It was at the old auto zone. You ever been to the auto zone? Wasn't expecting to witness or anything. I had my mind on one thing I was trying to pick up. So I'm in a hurry, you know. You know how we are when we're in a hurry. I thought, Lord, help me slow down so I can shine a light to people. He said, I like that shirt. And I was like, oh, what shirt do I have on? Oh, yeah, that's my birthday shirt. Yeah, I'll be at church tomorrow. I said, how about you? Do you have a church? He said, I do. He said, tell me about it. I thought, look at this, how easy it is to start a conversation with somebody if I'll just slow down for a second and talk to somebody. Praise God. Well, he went to church. Well, here you are at church. You're there. I'm there. Praise God. These Antichrist spirits want to keep you from being there. That's the point. Because the average American lifestyle is extremely busy right now. And see, you don't know, just ask Thomas someday, if you make it to heaven, what it's like to be deemed and called Doubting Thomas all your life because you skipped one church service. Imagine, I mean, imagine if American Christians were deemed like that. We earned the term Doubting Jeremy because I missed one. Wow. The disciples were together. If you don't know the story, Jesus walks through the wall and appears to them. He says, here, touch, touch the nail prints, guys. They're like, whoa. They see Thomas, who wasn't there for whatever reason. The Bible doesn't tell us why. I'm sure it was a good reason. It may be a great reason, but Jesus showed up. And see, you never know when the answer from the throne room may come, and he's going to use his church to give it to you. He's going to speak it to your spirit. Oh, I'm telling you, I've been in church service where the preacher's preaching about something else, makes one statement, and I'm like nailed to my chair like, whoa, God is dealing with me on that one thing. That preacher would have no clue because he's not, it's not even a subject of the day. It's dangerous to walk into a church like this. So your overcoming may not be your thing. You need to make it your thing. But I guarantee you the Holy Spirit has a word just for you today. And this is the point. Life is busy. And the Antichrist spirit wants to keep you from the anointing. Listen, I, I couldn't emphasize this enough. This very moment of your week is the most important of the whole week. The word is coming forth. 
The purpose of worship is to press into his presence, to prepare your heart to hear a word from God. And you don't live by bread alone. You live by the words that proceed from God's mouth. And I happen to be foolish enough to believe that God could anoint this boy from 110 Sweetwater Street in Wheeler, Texas, to preach a word from the throne room of heaven. And it's one word could change your life forever. The trajectory of your family. All you got to do is receive it and take it as God speaking. Somebody said, You're, are you God? No, I'm Jeremy. Thank you. Servant of the Most High God. Appointed by God is the meaning of my name. And I am appointed by God. And I'm going to do what he called me to do. Now, it took me a while to get there. Otherwise, I'd be a little younger than 45 standing here in the midst of what you see. But hey, we're here. No need crying over spilled milk. But you can, you can put off the call of God by decisions you make, especially young people. I hope you're listening. Because at 17 is where I made some dumb, dumb, dumb decisions. But God is a restorer, thank God. Yes, he is. And he's restored me. And it's by God's mercy I stand before you today. And I'm just letting you know this. You've overcome these antichrist spirits. See, from the time I was a kid, these spirits have been tracking my life. From the time you were a kid, they're tracking your life. Does that scare you? Whether it scares you or not is true. Demons are tracking you. They are. Familiar spirits are tracking you. And your decisions on a daily basis can determine how much entrance they have into your life. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device. Your decisions on a daily basis can determine how much entrance they have into your life. Now, if you have faith in the blood of Jesus, the door's shut. Can I encourage you to shut the door, keep the devil in the night? Keep that door shut. Give no place to the devil. Are you listening? Why does the Bible say that to a New Testament blood-bought, Holy Ghost-filled Christian? Give no place to the devil. I think some Christians have are brain dead. I mean, seriously. They open up the door and they wonder why the devil comes in. Shut the door. You ever heard that? Shut the front door? Do it. <laughs> and what do you do? Recognize that you're of God and you've overcome. Say it, I overcome. Every Antichrist spirit. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So these Antichrist spirits don't have enough power to penetrate the kingdom of God and the king's protection. Did you catch that? Somebody's like, what are you talking about? See, this is the sad thing about Christianity. We don't realize we now become a part of a kingdom. And yet we're in a republic and people get all confused. Did you know a republic is the best way to have other people be your leaders? On this planet, this side of heaven, a republic that you find yourself in is the best form of government. There's only seven forms of government in the whole planet. And a republic is the best on this side of heaven. But when the king is perfect and there's no shadow of turning in him, the kingdom is the best. Are you following me? That's why right now it's a republic and this is a, the greatest country on the planet. It really is. Though there's a bunch of perverts trying to Come in and use our freedom for a chance to uh, destroy us. It's exactly what's happening. It's what's happening right now. But you and I, we're plugged into Christ. So I don't care what spirit is on even our president or any other leader. I can tell you right now, he, the Lord Jesus, is greater than the spirit that's in this world. I said, he is greater that means the greater one is in you. If the greater one's in you than whatever happens out here doesn't matter. I'm not going to get depressed because of who's president. I'm going to rejoice because the greater one lives in me. I want you to boldly declare that. Say, the greater one lives in me. That is if you've repented. That is if you're following him. That is if your faith is in the blood of Jesus. You see, the Spirit of God is greater, is stronger than what's driving this world. 
Make no mistake, there's a spirit driving this world. And it's demonic, and it's, it, it, there is a form of power to it. Look, I came across somebody one time in my life that told me, you go to church, well, guess what? I'm a witch. I can move a pencil across a table. And I said, well, you know, that does not impress me. Because of what purpose is that serving the kingdom? You moved a pencil across? I can just reach over and grab that pencil. Thank you. See what I'm talking about? Well, you better watch out. This is real stuff. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Somebody told me, this, is, this was years ago. When I was I, at 17, I repented, started serving the Lord. And someone told me this one time. I went to pick up these people with this other Christian brother of mine. And he said, you know what? If you're not loving to us, we're going to put a spell on you. Sadly, I haven't heard about that guy. Hopefully he's still alive and has a chance to repent. But I can tell you one thing. I, I'm going to keep going forward. There ain't no spell that's going to work when the greater one's on the inside of you. See, somebody says, well, uh, some of my family, some of my friends, they're trying to put a spell on me. It's going to go right back on them if the greater one's really in you. If you really have faith that's alive and you're following the king, any curse that someone tries to put on you goes right back on them. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Yes, I've known this since a kid. Yes, I speak it all the time. But it's got to become a staple in your life. Where when you're all alone, you can't call pastor. Maybe no one's around. That's what comes out of your mouth. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. Greater is he that's in me, praise God, than he that's in this world. If you got to say that a thousand times, say it till you believe it. And once you believe it, you're going to know it because you're going to start shouting. When you realize the king of this universe that spoke this thing into existence, that the, our, our leading NASA scientists have only seen 4% of what's out in this universe, that one that spoke this into existence... It's on the inside of you. Are you serious? There's nothing we face that's impossible. There's no reason to be down and out. There's no reason to be forlorn. Our king that rose from the grave is in you. And that same power resides on the inside of the born again spirit. Glory to God. Woo! Praise the Lord. Either you're going to overcome this world or it's going to overcome you. you got to make up your mind. Now, you see, this isn't just hype that we got into. Oh, Lord, I got excited today. No, you got to get to where you believe that. You know, if somebody that don't get excited about anything is just not worth a wooden nickel. I'm telling you right now, some people are like a lump on a log. you got to have to shake yourself. If you're going to do something in the kingdom... Praise the Lord. And you got to believe something like that. The greater one's in you. See, these aren't crazies that stood up and shouted. They weren't doing that for pastor. They're doing that because they believe the greater one's in them. And either you're going to overcome this world or the world's going to overcome you. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. And either you're going to overcome this world, or the world's going to overcome you. You just got to make up your mind. Which side are you going to choose? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So when I see worldliness show up, guess who goes on the attack? The gatekeeper anointed by God of the home. Say, oh, no, we ain't wearing that, baby. I love you. You're not wearing that. You don't know how young men think. Oh, no, get off that website now. In fact, turn in your phone. Some of y'all, if you don't get your young people turning in the phone, they're going to hell on your watch. I'm all right now. I'm talking from God. I hope you're listening. This ain't my notes, which means I'm flowing from the Holy Ghost right now. I'm telling you that if you don't get aggressive to be in the anointing that God's called you to be in, dads, your kids could go to hell. If you don't get aggressive and attack worldliness, worldliness will overcome. This is one reason God's trusted me to have a Christian school that's a model school within just five years of its existence. 
There ain't no shabby thing we got going on here. And I'm not boastful about it, but I'm not ashamed of it either. And I'm going to tell you the reason why God is raising up mighty warriors and missionaries are going all over this planet and preachers and teachers and business leaders right here at Accelerate because the greater one really is in me. Yeah, which means he's in this place. And I will attack worldliness in this school. And I don't think it's cool for one second. So all the parents... If you got kids enrolled, go ahead and flow with me on this. Let's attack this thing, because I don't want kids going to hell. I want them doing what God called them to do. Yeah. Glory to God. Either the world will overcome you, or you will overcome the world. Which is it going to be? You know, Peter painted a perfect picture. I say that a lot. That, that's almost like the Peter Pickled Piper or whatever. That I don't even know the. I don't even know the the, the, the say. Peter painted a perfect picture of what it looks like when the world overcomes you. In 2 Peter chapter 2, go there. Say, thank God for the word. Aren't you glad to be in church today? 2 Peter 2, 20. For if after they, which is people in general, have escaped the pollutions of this world. See, so either you overcome the world or the world overcomes you. So right up front, we see this descriptive word, pollution. Just living on this planet can pollute you without you choosing to do anything evil because it's coming at you everywhere. You can't even watch a football game without them trying to weave it into the commercials now. I'll tell you right now, I, I told you I turned on that game for a minute because I had... I, I, my phone had dinged on seeing there was a score that was close. So I thought, well, I'll log on here and, and watch it on my phone. And I, I turned it on, and I'm finishing up. My notes I already had them written, and I'm going over this. And a commercial came on that was straight-up demonic. In fact, it caught my attention, gave me chills from head to toe. A young lady there started talking in a deep, deep voice. And they're advertising some exorcism movie or something like that. And I thought, well, the world ain't ashamed any longer to show you what it's like when someone's demon-possessed. Sad thing is most Christians see that, and what happens? Oh my. They go and hide. No, no, no. The greater one's inside of us. And unless you're yielding to the pollutions of this world on purpose, that demon spirit has nothing in you. Right on the other hand, if you yield to the pollutions of this world and think they're cool, then guess what? You ain't going to resist no demon. You better hope to God you don't come across somebody like that because you ain't got what it takes to free them, Skeva's sons and daughters. But Peter says, lest I digress, go down a rabbit trail, after they've escaped the pollutions of the world. How many have escaped the pollutions of this world? Yeah, I'll tell you, they're out there. As you know, they're always out there. All it takes is you letting down your guard one day and deciding to do something stupid and that pollution's coming in. It's always there. So you, uh, every day you have to live vigilant. Every day you have to live intentional. Are you following me? If you're going to live the escaped from pollutions lifestyle, how do we do that? Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if after they've escaped the pollutions, but they're entangled... In those pollutions and overcome. I wanted to emphasize this. Either you overcome the world or it overcomes you. But this is a wrestling match. Make no mistake about it. Some people act like, well, that's not really true. In Christ, I've got the victory. Like it's this automatic thing, and it's true. I've already told you that. You do have the victory. But for you to, to walk in it, you're going to have to overcome some things. And that one of them is going to be the pollutions of this world. So those pollutions want you to stop resisting. How do you know they've overcome you? You stop resisting. You just go with it. Keep resisting. God knows the difference in sin chasing you and you chasing sin. But you better get that out of your system right now if you're going to overcome the world. you got to stop chasing sin. 
I'm going to stand right here and preach it. It ain't popular. People don't talk about it. But I'll tell you right now, there's people sitting even in this room, people watching, streaming, listening by radio. They're dealing with sin, and they don't resist it. They just do it every single time. They feel like it. They yield to it, chasing to feel good. But you've got to overcome that because this verse says this, that if you've escaped through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but you're entangled in it again and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. He said, for it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandments. So see, that tells you right now, this is what's going to be a part of this. When pollution overcomes you, this no longer has any say in your life, the Bible. If you're listening to my radio, I'm holding up my Bible. If the Bible has no more say in your life, like you don't care whether your life lines up with it or not, pollution is running amok in you. You are a human sewer. And once you go septic, it's hard to get you back. This isn't just a physical diagnosis I'm talking about. Once you spiritually go septic, how are we going to get you back from that? It's a serious situation, folks. You may not know, I know people that went septic, and it killed them. It killed them. God designed your body physically as an example to get rid of waste. I'm not here to camp out and talk about that. Uh, when nobody likes to brag or talk about that. I'm here to tell you, we got to get rid of that thing. There's waste we got to get rid of. But spiritually, God's designed you to get rid of this pollution. And if you don't, it's going to show up in the way you turn from his holy commandments. Where are these delivered to you, by the way? The church. But it happened to them. Peter said, remember, he's painting a picture. It's a perfect picture of those that are overcome by the world. A true proverb comes true. A dog returns to his own vomit. Have you ever seen a dog eat their own throw up? I'm going to wait till you raise your hand, whether you've seen that or not, because I have a video. I'm, no, I don't have a video. I want to show you. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Every hand is like, I, do, I don't want to see that. If you've never seen it, here's an example, right? We don't want to watch that, do we? Nobody wants to see that. Do you think your heavenly father wants to see you go back and eat the vomit of this world that he delivered you from? No. He wants you to overcome it. He has got a vested interest in you overcoming Peter said, though, when you're overcome by the world, a dog returns to his own vomit. A sow being washed goes right back to the mud. Man, that would aggravate me if I was a pig farmer. Got my champion pig washed off, and he goes right back to the mud. Wow. See, when you give up, the world overcomes you. Pastor Jeremy here. That's all the time we have today. So I hate to interrupt myself preaching there, but we had a good time today. Yes, we did. And we invite <laughs> you to come in person. Come see us. Stop by and say, hey, Pastor Jeremy. Hey, Miss Erin. I saw you on TV because we would love to meet you Absolutely. and shake your hand. Absolutely. And be sure and tune in again next time on the same station, same time for the Accelerate Church television broadcast.